So, good evening yet again on Cinco de Mayo. This is video number three, all produced on the same day. It's been productive day. Uh, I was talking about how I started out um, walking up Mount Tabor after a very fine science lecture last night. And I was going to definitely get you the um, name of our guy who talked about the Dr. William, what was it again? Because he knows everything about the current story, how to uh, talk about the origins of life. Dr. William Martin, Institute of Molecular Evolution, Heinrich Hein Universität in Dusseldorf, right? Originally from Texas. So that was a talk I was at last night. These are some of the talks we've been enjoying going way back to the to the 90s here in Portland. There's Carl Sagan. Let's just jump around and look at some of these big names. Like, you should go to this website, isep.org, and just be amazed at the caliber of speaker that we've been enjoying since 1991. And here we are in 2017. Uh, there's Sir Roger Penrose. He's come a number of times. Uh, Dr. Ian Stewart. I'm just picking people I specifically remember. Jared Diamond, of course, Gail Mon, we've all heard of. I mean, this is like quite the lineup. So Portland is kind of like Vienna. I'm thinking back when Wittgenstein lived there before everything went south. It was a capital of culture, and there was a lot of synergy, positive synergy going on. So I've been kind of comparing uh, Portland to that era because I read a lot of Wittgenstein and Vienna Circle type uh, literature, Carl Manger crosses that uh, path. Um, of course, Freud, who I started reading in eighth grade, I was just fascinated by the title, Interpretation of Dreams. I mean, who wouldn't be? It took me a while to develop more context for some of this psychoanalytic stuff. Like, I like Lacan a lot, and I connect the Borromean rings to, uh, to, um, to synergetics, actually. Anyway, I talked about this Harper's issue, which is kind of following that uh, Edward Snowden story and all that. If you're, if you saw Citizen Four, the person who made that film, Laura, she's like a star in this story as well. But I just I wanted to say that going forward, in my little personal scenario in Portland, after making that first video this morning, I went out for. A, for lunch with my good friend Glenn, Glenn Stockton. Here he is. He just found this uh, National Geographic do pentagonal dodecahedron map of the world and, and was buying it there. But we went to lunch at Scavone's. That's near this pet story. This is a picture of what it, very blurry picture of what it used to be inside, very crowded. But in any case, um, yeah, Glenn, he used to work for the NSA a while back, you know, Vietnam era. He was a crypto analyst and placed in in Vietnam to to help decrypt the um, communications between what we might call PT boats that the uh, the military there was using and trying to figure out what was going on stuff like that he's good at his work and uh, so he, and then he worked at Fort Meade for a while in the NSA so he knows you know kind of a lot about some of it but I just wanted to sort of tie all sorts of threads together tonight actually i've made some mistakes in terms of saying things like 120 great circles when what i really meant was 120 triangles and things i'm trying with these videos to not be too like slick and edit everything and make it look like you have to be like a super duper sort of um high production value kind of guy to do synergetics videos because Really, there are too few of us out there teaching any of this stuff, aren't there? I mean, we need some more show people, if that's what that slide was about. This was a trip to the Gold Door, a local um, shop that I really enjoy. It says with my friend Jason. He's studying to become a chaplain. Anyway, we went and checked out the store in my neighborhood. So I've had a good Cinco de Mayo. I wanted to just say that, and I wanted to tie off a couple of terminology things regarding synergetics. So let's go back to that more serious slide, although I do want to, uh, let's see, 
One of the, of the loose ends was the flying spaghetti monster. I don't think everyone will have gotten the um, the link to partially overlapping scenario universe, but the, the, the idea is that spaghetti itself is kind of a picture, isn't it, of our time tunnels that we live in. We all live in sort of these scenarios that it's our life, right, the movie of my life. And there are all these um, partially overlapping movies, which you can think of as kind of like spaghetti in a way. And then it's idolatrous, really, or just plain not very smart, let's call it, to try to picture the whole universe as just one unitary concept. That's what Fuller says you don't have to do in his philosophy. So I find that fairly um, refreshing to have a philosophy that dares to explicitly reject any unitary image and call that the universe. It's not a big sphere that's expanding. And we do think of these things, but you know, where would you see that sphere? How did you get to be outside? In Western civilization, I think we, we tend to forget in our rush to be objective, we forget that there is a subject viewer. And, you know, when you show a picture, a technical picture, there is a camera position. And once we got into ray tracing and more of that kind of thing, we uh, started to realize you have to define where the camera is, and you always do have a camera. I do have this thing called the Oregon Curriculum Network, by the way. If you want to get more into some of the math and Python that I've developed around synergetics, there's quite a bit here regarding ray tracing, camera position, the kind of stuff I was just talking about. How do you build polyhedra on the screen? Once the World Wide Web was uh, invented, I was quick to get a whole bunch of polyhedra out there. This one, for example, it looks kind of like a photograph, but it's actually a rendering of a toy called Strange Attractors, where we had the magnet parts insertable into the rod parts so that you uh, didn't need as many magnets as rods because the magnet parts are kind of expensive compared to just tubes. So you could have a large box of differently length colored tubes all color coded by length, and then you have these separate cones with the magnets inside that click into these uh, perfectly spherical ball bearings, right? So this was a rendering. Even though you see all these reflections and it looks like a photograph, I did this with POV ray and Python, and that's what some of this writing is about at 40solutions.net, OCNCP4E.html. You might want to W, get that site and archive it, because who knows, you know, it could go away at some point. All these things do, so archive away. Anyway, back to another loose end I wanted to, to cover, angle versus frequency. I'll make that my closing. Keep getting, these are kind of quirky slides, but remember, this is Portland. Keep Portland weird. There's Jason. I let him uh, play with C60 today after lunch with Glenn. I almost slept through our meeting because I was going to meet my Uncle Bill today at the Union Station, but train service has been suspended from Seattle because of landslides, was it? Mudslides? I actually have to go look it up and figure out why don't we have trains. In any case, here's this mind-brain distinction that I harped on in my first Synergetics 200 series uh, Synergetics as Philosophy video. What I didn't harp on, and maybe should have and can now, is angle versus frequency. Like we see the word frequency, which you should definitely associate with energy. E equals HF, as we say. You know, H, Planck's constant, whatever. But frequency, what is it What is it that's, that's vibrating? you got to have something sort of a medium. And we could say, no, I'm not saying ether. I'm saying energy is the medium of frequency. It has shape, it wiggles, and it takes time, it occupies time. So energy is kind of the lump concept that has all the mass momentum kind of things all, all mixed in already. It's, it's life in the real world down here. And the platonic sort of idealized world 
you know you're in the idealized world when only angles matter, <coughs> excuse me, only shape matters, like this cube is any size at all if you don't think about the environment. Like here's my face, so obviously it's not a very big cube. But think of the Borg cube in like a Star Trek uh, episode. It's full of like Borg, and it's and it's huge. And it's still, though, it has the same angles, all these 90-degree angles. Remember Descartes' deficit. If you start with 720 degrees, the number of degrees in a tetrahedron, and you add that 720, distribute it to all of these other vertexes, you can make it open up flat. And conversely, to get it back to concave, convex, you have to take a flat surface and suck out 720 degrees and you can do it in different ways from different vertices. Ultimately, you're going to get something more spherical. So Fuller was always talking about how the contained aspect of the universe, of having it like enclosed and encapsulated, that has to do with taking out a tetrahedron. By that, he's referring to Descartes' deficit. This is math that was known a long time ago. V plus F equals E plus 2, Euler's equation. We think now maybe Descartes knew that too, but encrypted it because he was afraid of knowing more than the uh, church at the time, and it was risky then to seem like you knew more than was good for your soul, as they say. So he encrypted some of his stuff, and Leibniz knew that, tried to get his notebook at an auction and all this story. Like, if you've heard that story, I'm, I'm interested in how much more of it we we know. Uh, I've read that book, but maybe there's some more. Anyway, I like history. Definitely like history. So uh, angle doesn't change with scale, but frequency does. So throughout synergetics, you're going to see this angle frequency distinction, and you're going to see angle and frequency mixed together. And what I'm encouraging is that you think of angle as just pure shape without regard for scale, like a tetrahedron in the abstract, we could say. A platonic tetrahedron, it has only shape. It has no energy content, or the energy content is irrelevant. And then when you actually create a tetrahedron or, or cube or any kind of shape and actually are in a scenario, a time tunnel, using energy, well, that's special case. That's the brain TV. That's the show we're in. And that's not the generalized principles. That's the manifestation of them. So when, when we read and say a religious text about how humanity is formed in God's image or whatever, and kind of the idolatrous way to think of that is like, oh, we might be shaped like, like, like God, like our outward shape. But what Fuller meant in synergetics when he said that we're in the after image is that we're kind of the the lagging, aberrational sort of contrail or trailing aspect of something that's really instantaneous. Because the things that happen in principle, they all happen like, just imagine that they happen really, really fast. And then it takes you a long time, the slow dawning of awareness. It's just a slow dawning. That's all. That is awareness. It's a slow dawning. So, and the principles there, it's immediate. You smash glass, psh, everything is like right away. There's no thinking about it. But humans are hesitant, reflective. They have to go over things. This is not a criticism. It's just how we are. And you could look at that as lag, kind of we're slow on getting it. We don't get it right away. We don't have that capability. And our very slowness is what creates our temporal universe, you might say, in terms of experience. Like, I'm not talking about, like, idealism necessarily. I'm just saying in synergetics, we see that humanity is called the after image sometimes, or the human psyche or the TV show is kind of su su suggesting that it's slower than instantaneous. And in being slower and drawn out in time, that's how we get below the line, whereas above the line, everything is is pre-frequency and, and right away. Like kind of a Teilhard de Chardin thing, kind of like God is in the future, if you're familiar with that cosmology. The future is like before 
we get around to getting it, I guess you could say. Anyway, I'm rambling along sort of philosophically, partly to encourage others to philosophize and bring in some of this geometry. Let's get it going here. Uh, look forward to uh, talking with you more. Happy Cinco de Mayo.